Wow. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Um, hi. Yep. See, there it is, the trash can right behind your head. Yeah, we had a little problem there getting going. Um, yeah. uh, Spectrum business, you guys are just not awesome. No. It goes down like every time we're yep, here. Yeah, every time. And it just went down and right when we were trying to go live, so here yep. we are. And they messed up my hair. Who you got in there? I got... Oh, we've got to say hi to Miss Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Uh, uh, Mr. Ken Elric. Hey. Ken. And uh, Tom McCatherine. Hi. Hey there. And we are simultaneously live streaming to YouTube, and that's just a lot of places to look. Um, so what's new? Everybody just dropped off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't know. You're. Are you still worth only that much money? You know. Um, <laughs> Let's see what let's see what uh, how much Shafe is worth now. Um, apparently, I'm worth six dollars and sixty six cents. Not evil at all. No, um, of course not. So it's been a while since we talked to you, and some in that time, somebody um, got a little ill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How was that? That was. Pretty so, awful. <laughs> so you got the COVID right after... Um, yep. I got the COVID sometime the first week of January. And... Um, was it as fun as everybody says? It was a lot less fun. It was... Um, it was weird because, you know, you think you got a cold or something or allergies or you're just tired from working too much or... Um, and then I just noticed one day when I came down the stairs, I had to lean over the counter to catch my breath and I'm like oh great I know what's going on so yeah that was it and then followed by three weeks of bedridden agony and a day, and a and whole a day, day in a hospital, hospital. <laughs> yeah towards the end of the, I had chest pains and they thought that was a, a, a um, blood clot and thank goodness it was not they were pretty adamant about testing for it um, and I'm one of those persons that has teeny tiny little veins that nobody can get so in order to do the test for the blood clot, they had to, um, they have to do a pretty powerful IV and flush fluid in there really fast, and my veins just couldn't take it. It was terrible. <laughs> it was awful. But um, I have made almost a full recovery. I'm a little fatigued and cranky. And, but, uh, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> um. <laughs> We're going on about six weeks of just, you know, mild symptoms. So, so it was a weird start to our year. We had yes, a, it was awful. a lot of stuff. Planned and, and yeah, planned. and we had to cancel a couple of jobs that don't seem to be coming back to us, and that's that's hard to be without income for two months. Yeah, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what else has been going? I mean, it's been it's been a minute. Yes, it has. Um, I don't remember what we talked about last time um, we were on here. Um, what else you got? I don't know. Where's your list? I'm lost without it. I keep looking for it. Oh, I didn't print our list of things. You don't have a list? So we did see some uh, cool... Um, what else has been going on with us? I don't... See, I've been here a lot. Yeah, somehow he, the whole, his whole family caught the COVID. Yep. Including me. My kids didn't get it, and he dodged the bullets. So yeah. how does that happen? It's tested multiple times. Uh, maybe I yeah. had it and... Like, just was symptomatic? I don't know. Or you had it, because you had a cold, a real bad cold. And, I did get a cold. It and, was uh, miserable. And slept for hours and hours. And we had to be apart because he tested negative. So I pretty much was alone for three months with my dogs. So. What you got on your hands here? It looks like a... Um, I paint. <laughs> yeah, I, I paint, and I got dirty hands constantly. So you've been doing a lot of that. Yes. That's been COVID life. Yes, uh, COVID life. Yes, definitely. Got to do something. Um, so we were, um, so with all this uh, available time we've had, we've been kind of looking at the news. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, we should talk about, you want to talk about the, the San Francisco folks first? The San Francisco folks. Who we got popping in there? We have Greg from high school. Hi. And uh, Miss Dina. Hello, Dina. Hey there. So I guess um, this is... There's a video that goes with this. this oh, is, that okay. This I, is. Uh, I thought this, some of the other stories were maybe took place there in San Francisco. Yeah. This story um, is terrifying. Yes. So these guys were robbed. They got all their camera gear robbed out of their car. But and there's a video. A dash cam caught it. They were actually in their car driving, getting onto a highway ramp. 
Um, let's have a look at that video here and uh, make it so you can actually see it. This is terrifying. Yes, I'm terrified of this happening. So pay attention to this car pulling up on the right. I mean, it's almost like a carjacking. They almost got away. I mean, this is just, they must have saw, these are uh, real estate photographers, busts the window out, pulls the bag of gear out, and then they're gone. Yeah. I mean, just wow. That fast. I look, mean, at, look how upset they are. There <laughs> is no way you could get away from that kind of. And uh, let's, see, let's see that again here. Uh, she's so upset. So I'm guessing someone probably saw them packing up from a job, and said, let's follow them, let's grab that bag. Seems like they knew what they were wanting to grab. And they knew exactly where it was. And what do you, what, what, what could you even do? They, I mean, if I was in that car, I would have think, I would have thought maybe someone hit us or yeah. rear-ended us. Uh, I don't, yeah, that's just. Yeah, they have no idea where. $7,000 worth of gear. Yeah. Um, God, well, at least someone got that the dash cam. Video, yeah, and so. I think they got a GoFundMe, and they got they I got know, all their stuff they, back. I think did yeah. they get the stuff back, or, or they, they get, got they got enough money? To enough replace, money, yeah. right? That happened to me. I got a, my car very delicately broken into, and four thousand dollars worth of equipment stolen from my vehicle. And I think there was only one person on the block where I lived that knew what I did, and I think it was probably that person that's, <laughs> who uh, did it. That's and, why you uh, need insurance. And he <laughs> had uh, helped himself to some some uh, Easter peeps that were in there, <laughs> and he saved me too. And we got this print in the background there. Oh, on yeah. the side of our heater. Yeah, we got some stuff. So I was seeing that. Um, that was actually, we posted a video of that for sale a yes. minute ago. And uh, we, got to, we got to do this art sale during these slow times. Now, there's something pretty funny about these. There's two of these. Yes, the other one's hanging up there. Um, you might find our tree coordinator hidden in here. Yep, it's kind of like a where's, where's Waldo kind of thing yeah. going on. Um, and this is a uh, cement factory in Fairborn, abandoned uh, equipment left behind. And the weird blue lighting is a, is a gel on a flash. So we're not loud tonight. We're just using the shotgun mic. So. Oh, so you might not be able to hear me. Yeah, so she might be a little low on yeah, that. We also got um, the, oh, yeah. beautiful... Beautiful. I love this photo. I, I'm really surprised, that, honestly, that it hasn't sold. I think I need to make it bigger, honestly. But that's also for sale. And we got some other stuff coming up that I don't have framed yet. Because I got frames all over the place. You know, some creative, creative, beautiful stuff. So, so yeah, she's been doing, that. doing a lot of this stuff. Um, oh, a lot of the frame restoration. Yeah, a lot of... And furniture restoration is her... Uh, <laughs> that is thing. a very hard... Hard learning process. Um, I've been. <laughs> I'd say I'm very much a beginner on that. While you were gone, I was here a lot shooting. Uh, well, we had a couple small little edit jobs or whatever. Nothing where we went out to go shoot. So I was in here um, shooting video for uh, a little bit of a, a, a short film. You got yes. more people? Yeah. An <laughs> old friend, Becca. Hello. Hello. Um, so one of the things that uh, we, uh, I did was, uh, I think I put, I, I did put a video about the Dolly Zoom. Yes. Uh, you know, this seems like nothing. This was a whole day of shooting. I mean, honestly, at least a half a day. It made it, you made it look like it was the easiest thing in the world that had ever been done. Let's see if we have, if we can hear us if I play it. Yeah. So what this is, you see how the background is kind of getting. I like the core. It just seems to shrink up into nothing. So basically what that is, is, um, now you've seen this in, in other films, so like, you know, see this kind of same thing in Jaws. I want to do that. I want to do this on a portrait. Any business executive out there that wants to try something like this, please. So you get like your whole like background kind of being a little different than your foreground. Yeah. So like the idea with that is it's done in camera. It's not, um, something you do later. You just, um, you've got to push in the camera and zoom out at the same time, or vice versa, pull out and zoom in at the exact same speed. So it's kind of tricky because you got to get real coordinated there. Yeah, and, I know uh, you can program something to do it on a dolly, some big expensive Well, if we machine. had a, you know, if we had a motorized slider, we could probably program it all. And but this focus. guy did it like it was nothing. Which I, is why it was a half day. I was at sure. home sick and I saw that and I was absolutely blown away by it. The, yeah. um, that technique. I didn't know you put a whole day into it. You could have just been like, oh, it was nothing. 
and it, that had it just been so impressive. Well, I also made a little video that we posted for social media. Yeah, I just I thought that was wonderful. I can't wait to try that with a with a portrait. Which was, and the reason I was even doing that is it was a little short film we're working on, and trying to figure out we're at the point now where we need some funds to um, for locations and, and people right. and whatnot. Uh, there's not enough of that together yet for a trailer, um, but we do have the uh, opening. Uh, opening, we could have a look at. Okay. Yeah, put it, put it out. Do it. Yeah. All right. I don't think we can talk through this. So, That's okay. here's the opening scene. Some stark new numbers on the COVID-19 crisis in the United States. Deaths and hospitalizations are now reaching heights above what was thought to be the peak of the pandemic. The U.S. is dealing with the worst pandemic in a century. Take a look at this graphic showing the single deadliest days in American history. Three days from this week alone are near the top of this list with three additional days from last week. The message from officials right across the United States is that the situation is dire and it is only going to get worse. As you mentioned, the data that we're seeing, Heather, is worse than it was at the peak in the spring. Lawmakers are still locked in a stalemate, divided over a more permanent relief package as millions of Americans navigate a cash-strapped new normal. We have enough to probably go for about a month and a half, two months. I'm frightened. I'm frightened about what's going to happen to so many families. We're not lazy. We're not trying to get something for nothing, but we don't want to lose our homes. If you are out during the curfew, you are subject to A topless me in the next scene, but oh, uh, <laughs> topless Brian! Woo! So yeah, the, the intro we were just talking as we were watching it. The um, the COVID things. Uh, this is like kind of a reality, science fiction, exaggerated reality kind of. Nineteen eighty four ish. Kind of like that. It's kind of nineteen eighty four, but the um, the little COVID things dancing around on some over top of that footage was uh, some school, some sort of school that wasn't medical school. And it's like, please use this for something. Don't please don't credit us because you know this is our first try at it. And uh, I think it's absolutely beautiful. But I, out of all the stuff that you could actually pay for to use, that was the best looking thing. Right. I mean, it's just amazing. I think it's just gorgeous. Except that um, I don't think the virus itself is that symmetrical. I think it's more bloppy and and sloppy looking. Bloppy. Yeah, bloppy. You know. Bloppy. That's a word. Like when you're not. That's a technical. You're word, not quite yeah. round. You are just kind of bloppy. Yes, exactly. Um, I don't know. It's a scary looking creature, though. Uh, what else we got? You want to talk about the tattoo? Uh, yes, this is sorry. a weird story. This is um, this is a weird story. So. Yeah, everybody knows who Cat is. She was uh, on. Cable, very yeah, talented, she's... very talented tattoo artist, very talented artist. Well, why don't you explain this a little bit? What is what is going on with this? Uh, um, a photographer that seems to be famous or semi-famous since he's done magazine work. Um, Jeff Sedlick. Sedlick, yeah. Forgive me if I'm not saying that right. Had photographed uh, Miles a Davis. jazz singer. Miles and, Davis, uh, yeah. Yeah, in 1989, which is the year we met. And it was featured in like Life magazine and pictures yeah, of the a, year, so it's a like a big picture. deal. Um, that's that kind of I copied that style quite a bit um, as a young person, and I guess that she tattooed this portrait on someone, which she wouldn't think. You know, you have a portrait tattooed. I, I my first thought was well, so, and then I got to reading the article a little bit, you know, about how famous that photo is and how. There was no permission asked, and I kind of was like, wow, I kind, I kind of get why he would be a little upset. I mean, I think if I had a portrait of someone famous and someone didn't ask me or credit me or anything, I think I might be a little perplexed about that. Um, so I kind of, I really see both sides of it. Um, it's a weird, it's a copyright case. I think he's looking for $150,000. Um, but it's weird because, yes, it's his image, but she actually had to draw that. Like mm -hmm. with their own hands. I guess mm -hmm. there's a lot of gray area. So it'll be kind of right. interesting to see what happens with this. Um, 
because I mean we're constantly uh, especially with music and sound in our videos we're constantly like trying to make sure that we get all the, the copyright all the legal stuff all yeah. the legal stuff and we had to do a uh, well they ended up not using it but um, they wanted to use a pop song and to get copyright permission, you got to pay a multitude of people. You got to pay the artist. You got to pay the publisher. Well, you got to figure out who you have to pay first, which it, is the hard part. Right? That is actually the worst part. And what if that who. was? Um, what if? What if they just brought a photocopy of that picture and she had no idea where it came from? Um, so I, I mean, I really, like, I really see both sides of it. But I think if I was that photographer, <laughs> this is terrible. I would honestly probably make a fuss just to get publicity. Um, well, it doesn't seem like the photographer maybe, really needs any more publicity. Or maybe have a, uh, I've never heard of him, maybe have a, a settlement. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that would be the, it's it's hard to say. I think that the a settlement will probably be the best way to do it. But um, when I first heard the story, I was like, ah, who cares? And I looked into that it. I was is, like, man, that's. I mean, that tattoo just looks amazing. I mean, it's yeah, a really, It's absolutely really beautiful. Good, yeah, she's uh, amazing. Yeah. Tattoo. So it's an interesting story. I mean, I guess we'll I hope see. that person doesn't have to lose their tattoo. That would be absolutely terrible. I, I mean, don't think could that they really? Could they really force that? I don't like, think so. That's... But that would be so. What I mean, what, what towards the end of the article, I realized that that's such a gray area that I don't think there's any legislation for tattooing um, being a copyright for infringement. Um, well, it's weird because it's a uh, it's it's art. I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. it's it's based off that, that photo is being used as a reference, which I think is how they worded it. Uh -huh. But it's not actually exactly the same as the photo. It's right. not the exact image. That's true. So it's, That's it's, true. It's like changing the wording when you, you know, when you're in school and you plagiarize something out of the Encyclopedia Britannica, which actually, I think we had the old ones from the '70s that smelled mildewy. You know, that our grandparents gave us that were door to door encyclopedias. You get we, one a month. That we plagiarized, and I knew you you know, when I was month. a kid. Yeah. Well, you imagine, change one or two words, and then it's yours, and the teacher's impressed, and it's good, right? Imagine if Wikipedia was like that, where just like each month it's just a different letter of the alphabet, things starting with that letter. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I think that would be great. Uh, I think they should print and bound Wikipedia and start selling it. But anyways, um, so that story kind of like me, uh, reminds me of uh, this uh, licensing issue I had, and God, this just got worse and worse and worse, where a company asked to license some video of... Um, oh, we visited a man in a 747, and... A man who lived in a 747 airplane. Airplane, yeah. yeah in the forest. Everybody knows what that in is. In the forest, and um, so they wanted, to license, they wanted me to license this video for them, and they promised big returns. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay. And the first thing they did was uh, put a copyright mark on my video on YouTube of that. So, I mean, I'm not into it now. So... Trying to get them to do anything to stop licensing it. I mean, I guess it was on the Daily Mail. I forget who else they said. And they're in lawsuits trying to get payment. And you'll get paid as soon as they get their payment. Mm -hmm. Well, what killed me is that they tried to tell you that you couldn't have it up because right. they had copyrighted it, which seems like it could be an automated thing. It may not have been entirely their fault. Well, a YouTube claims. Right. Keen in the butt. You don't <laughs> yeah, even know yeah, who yeah, to talk yeah. to. Yeah, that's true. So it may not have been them directly. And you know, I was seeing, I was, I was seeing different uh, media outlets using it, and um, so I'm like, dude, take it down. Um, according to your own terms of this contract, I can revoke my rights to you. I can revoke your rights at any given time, and I did. And it took them forever to acknowledge that. Ultimately, they they really did good, though. And I was like, okay, dude, I thought you're gonna. Pay me. Yeah. And that took a long time, but eventually it was, so this is a, the whole deal is done. They're not licensing uh, that video footage and they did pay a couple hundred bucks, not much for right. the amount of time and pain in the butt that we had to right, deal with. Right, yeah, yeah. I was surprised that you got anything out of that at all. I was totally surprised, yeah. I didn't. There's your profile. Yeah. <laughs> so what else? Um, we should check in to see what I'm worth. What you were worth six, 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 six. Well, that was now last time. Let's reload and see. Thirteen forty-seven. I'm going up because I might sound smart. On you video. know what happens though is when him and I get in an argument, his worth goes down dramatically and really quickly. Um, should we talk about uh, this big giant project we're working on? Oh, our new website, maybe. Um, so yeah, we uh, actually this is way behind. We've been uh, trying to build out our new website. Um, it's we're pretty excited about it. It's so much uh, cooler um, than what 
we have up now. Um, but yeah, that's been taking up a, a fair amount of time. Yes, I can't believe the amount of text that has to be written. And, and yeah, there's a lot of writing. To be and you don't there. want to just put up a generic terminology about storytelling and what's the other cliche word? Uh, Strategist. <laughs> Story, you know the bu- the buzzwords that go around. Storytelling and strat- strategist and what is oh there's another one I can't think of it I don't know. But. You know you the people who like these buzzword people they just oh it's crazy I mean you'll see that a lot with the startup people they always have a buzzword they got to use mm-hmm. and it's just like dude you're like the third person in the last hour that said that in this right. conversation yeah it's hard to set yourself apart and then I mean it kind of reminds me of when a when a community is is on the down. Hill slide, you know what I'm going to say. They always talk about revitalization. Whenever you hear revitalization of a community, run! You don't want to invest in that community. I didn't say that. Well, you know, I mean, if if you're saying revitalization when you're talking about community, it kind of indicates that there's a problem in the first place. Exactly, so. yeah. I just see that so much in, in, in just communities that are just disasters. So I think... Um, the last thing, God, we had such a rough time getting this going. Looks like we've been going for about 20 minutes. Yeah. 23 minutes. Yeah, we had it. Well, you know what? We didn't have all the things that you had to queue up and all the little videos and, and extras that you show. I can't believe how much work that is. It's yeah, this really... time we didn't, um, we didn't put a lot into having tons of little clips. Yeah, it's a tremendous stuff. amount of work. It can be a whole day to put together a a live stream to talk about and, and then, the trash can is still showing in the back and, and, and the thing about uh, it is is you know it's been a while and the whole COVID thing that you i mean do you think it's real <laughs> no it's pretend <laughs> uh, was it as bad as you thought it would be some people have gotten uh, away the COVID thing through. actually honestly when i first found out this was happening i was one of those persons that was very angry about the economic shutdown i was like it's just the flu what the good <laughs> I was one of those, and then uh, um, very quickly I changed my mind. Um, and then having had it, yes, it's it's bad. It's very bad. Um, I think if it weren't killing people, maybe I would say let's not be so cautious. But with it killing people, and I can definitely feel in my body how it could kill you. I mean, you right. The the shortness of breath is really hard to explain because it's not like you cough and you get relief. It's like a it's like being in a sauna. You just can't quite um, breathe right. It's very, it's n- not like anything I've ever had before. So, and then you get, it gets worse and you get really, really scared. And then you think about the long-term things. Like I'm still having a lot of um, problems with fatigue, uh, headaches, brain fog. The brain fog is embarrassing. Um, I was explaining to. It's to, cute. I took, no, it's not. I took my car to be, the oil to be changed. And I'm like, can you check my, my, you know, the window, the, the, they're like the windshield wipers. I'm like, yeah. And you don't want to be like, well, I just got over COVID because then they're going to hose you down or something. I don't know. Yeah, so this is, it's been. And like, names and just things like that are escaping me that I, I don't know. I think that's getting better. It's tolerable. You just have to rest. Uh, since the beginning of the year, lot. it's been like one quarantine after another. It really <laughs> I mean, has. especially yeah. for me, I was yeah, in you, yeah. quarantine and then uh, some of my family members. And then him and I couldn't be together it. because he was negative and I was positive. So yeah, in order terrible. to protect his mother and sister, we stayed apart. But then they got it and you didn't. So what? You, you know, the, it's a weird, weird thing. Remember when all this was getting started? Um, we, um, You had your freak out. About. Yeah, the economy, yes, I didn't have any work, and it, we literally lost $3,000 and the rest of our income from the rest of the year immediately. That was very terrifying. <laughs> that and, was very, and very you, you terrifying. Were like, you were like, uh, there's this thing happening, let's go film it uh, for absolutely no reason. Right, we uh, didn't want to sit around. We were like, let's just go and uh, film this nonprofit that's doing this food drive. Let's go and uh, make a story out of it. So we did, yeah. And uh, we actually did end up getting paid for some of that. Right, um, they, yeah. They and we made a great have... video for them. Um, yeah, actually, if you ever have a chance to check them out, they're, uh, they do all kinds of things aside from shoes. Yeah, they're, um, but they're we, a great organization. We. But the weird thing is when we went out to shoot this, it was about um, they knew the schools were going to close. So we're just talking about the schools closing for the first they time. They had not closed when, yet, uh, yeah. They just did. And... Uh, Boy, how things have uh, progressed. It's been, I mean, I think it's, it's it been got, a wild ride. It got so much worse than I expected, but um, 
I don't know, the amount of help, uh, my friends helped me a lot at first, and then the, thank God for that unemployment and, uh, and health care and other government benefits that I was able to get. So, you know, not everybody's that lucky. And it is a hot mess with unemployment and those programs, but um, it really saved. It really saved us, definitely. So I guess the last little thing we got is uh, another news story into the whole photo thing. Oh um, goodness! Oh. So this one's kind of uh, kind of interesting. So uh, David Yarrow, who is a um, well-known wildlife photographer, um, was spotted. Uh, what was it? Where were they at? They were in some national uh, forest. Grand Tetons? Uh, Grand Teton? Yeah. National Park. Uh, Where is that? Uh, it's a national park in a place. Oh, okay. So, about U.S.? Right uh, it's, yeah. It's okay. a, so, anyways, this guy was spotted by another photographer, probably doing wildlife. And this almost sounds like it's uh, some sort of rivalry. Mm, I don't think so. But I don't think I so don't either. Think, I don't think so. She snapped some photos, as you see here. Um, he had his assistants feeding foxes so that he can get pictures. Well, he, they said that he was feeding them. There's and, a big difference between feeding them and making little poppy sounds or whatever with right. the bag. And, uh, so, this woman caught him, and I guess what she saw and heard was one of the, um, what was the quote? Uh, one man circled the area feeding the fox occasionally. After this, the men started photographing two foxes. Uh, the photographer instructed one of them to use a plastic bag to entice the foxes to come closer. Um, and then one of the men stated, you better do what I tell you or I'll take out my gun and shoot you. And I guess that really upset this woman. Um, so th this guy... Um, he said who is famous is kind of Did he say book. that to the other person or to the fox? To the fox. Ooh, okay. I'd say that to you. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has. <laughs> but he anyways. He doesn't feed me. I don't know. You got to... It sounds like a little bit of rivalry, but I think, you know, if you're a wildlife photographer, feeding the wildlife is up, especially in a national park like that. Big, big no-no. Right. You don't want to do that. I definitely it's, agree uh, with that. Um... You don't want to feed homeless people either. You might end up with a lifelong fiancé, boyfriend, partner. That you found me. <laughs> and definitely don't give them beer. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel mixed feelings about this one, too, because even though I agree with her blowing the whistle, I kind of think if he's that famous, he definitely would know better. He would know and, better. And definitely be wary of being caught. And what if he didn't feed them? I mean, what if they were... It really just I mean the paper bag I don't know I think that's I think that's okay right just I mean who doesn't like make a bag, noise yeah. or whatever to get an animal to look at I don't Feeding know I'm not a wildlife them. photographer I don't know what what the protocol is for that I mean I, I know better <coughs> than to feed a, a grizzly bear or whatever but you know better than feed you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyways yes that's that's about we got anything else yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I see two sides to everything, and that's probably my biggest problem in life. I have constant conflict with myself. I noticed. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's it. <laughs> Do we have any, I think that's all we got to talk about. Um, we'll do this again in a month. Yeah. Uh, hopefully no one will be getting the COVID again. Oh, gosh, yeah. Stay safe, and, guys. Uh, I mean, you know, we wore masks, and we're very careful. Do we got any anybody else here that's oh, anybody saying yeah. anything? I'm looking. Miss, I got too many Miss windows. Christy Gellum, hello. And, um, and uh, Paul, hi. A couple of older friends here. And they, but, but everybody just drops off. They look at me and go, oh, God, <coughs> ew, she looks terrible. Clack. We got really? a cool thing that I'm excited about coming up. I'm not going to talk much about, but we get to see some of our videos that we have yet to produce up on a big jumbotron at a stadium yes. and i'm excited about yeah, that yeah that's true yes yeah, so that that's, is, that's a big deal that is a big deal so our little local beat and dragon stadium our stuff's on gonna be on a seven foot seven story screen and yeah that's exciting it is and we get the live stream from there yeah cool maybe somebody will buy some art <laughs> so <laughs> um so anyways i guess that's it i'm gonna re guess we're just gonna close out with replaying that little bit of the short film thing and it's we'll beautiful call, we'll call you did a great good. job it's not done there's a lot more to do so thanks for um watching us ramble <laughs> bye everybody
You guys have a good one. That was pretty good. Some stark new numbers on the COVID-19 crisis in the United States. Deaths and hospitalizations are now reaching heights above what was thought to be the peak of the pandemic. The U.S. is dealing with the worst pandemic in a century. Take a look at this graphic showing the single deadliest days in American history. Three days from this week alone are near the top of this list with three additional days from last week. The message from officials right across the United States is that the situation situation is dire and it is only going to get worse. As you mentioned, the data that we're seeing, Heather, is worse than it was at the peak in the spring. Lawmakers are still locked in a stalemate, divided over a more permanent relief package as millions of Americans navigate a cash-strapped new normal. We have enough to probably go for about a month and a half, two months. I'm frightened. I'm frightened about what's going to happen to so many families. We're not lazy. We're not trying to get something for nothing, but we don't want to lose our homes. If you are out during the curfew, you are subject to any customers. We still got a few left. She's probably right. I don't know why I do this every day. All of our clients are either sick or out of business. I grew up being told that if you work hard, you'd be fine. But even before this crazy virus came along, none of the people I know got that lifelong job straight out of school, built that savings, work until you retire, and retire and do fun things with that retirement fund and the savings you built. That's a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream of the past that doesn't exist anymore. Some people refuse to believe it though. Just end up dying trying to reach that pipe dream. I wonder where the word pipe dream came from. I should look that up. Fucking do 